Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. For all of you who have been asking for me to get out and do some shop tours, today that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm really excited to be going to uh, a couple of absolutely amazing woodworkers and they have one of the nicest workshops I've ever seen. I think you'll enjoy it. So come on along and uh, let's go see the shop tour with Cam Russell and Karen Trickett. Hi Karen and Cam. Hi Colin. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks welcome. For, thanks for inviting me You're here. very welcome. Looking forward to a tour of your shop. Well, looking forward to having you. Great. Yeah. So here we are with uh, Cam and Karen in, in the middle of their shop and we're going to look at some details of some tools in a minute, but what's the size of this shop? It's uh, 24 wide, 32 long. Wow, yeah. what a beautiful shop. You've got two lovely big workbenches. Of course, every shop has a table saw. I think the tool in the shop that gets the most hours put on it, and the one that we have bottlenecks on sometimes because we each want to use it for separate projects. Yeah. So you've got to go off and think of something else to do while the other person finishes with it. So you've got to kind of pace yourself yes. how yeah. it works. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed right over here you've got uh, your chop saw station too. I, I love the table that you've built for this. Uh, this is, what is this, uh, 10 feet long, 12 feet long? Yeah, it's, it'll handle a good length. It works well. It's sort of a, a bit of a work in progress and it, we're not 100% happy where it is. It's a bit close to the table saw at times, but uh, we're thinking of maybe reorganizing a bit more because the shop always evolves. This is something, an interesting tool I think you'll enjoy. I asked them what they're using for a jointer and uh, Cam and Karen have this lovely 12 inch jointer that we'd all like to have. But it's also a planer. Watch how this works. Okay, so it's got a helical head here that is the jointer and you join from this direction right over. And to convert it to the planing mode, you just start with the fence all the way tight to the guard. And then it's got a lock release here you just undo. And that table goes up there. And then a lock release on this side flips this one up. And then and this hood comes over, and we're now in planer mode. The collection goes around there. And so the same head that was our jointer head is now the planing head, and you feed the planing uh, boards in that direction. Wow. So here's the other part of the shop that we're having a look at now. We've got um, a lovely big band. So what size is this? Six, 16. 16 mm -hmm. inch, yeah. Uh, and right here is the tool I would like to have. This is a belt sander. Uh, a very nice tool and this is looks like about a 15 inch or something. Yeah. It's an open end so it actually they say you can do a 30 inch tabletop. Okay. Yeah. Oh so you can flip it up and do it one side, turn it around and do yeah. the other exactly. side. Well wow, that's a lovely piece of... Uh, and I notice behind over here they've got the router table and then the smaller bandsaw. Um, so there's tools all over the place in here. But the one thing I'm leaning on right now is their dustbin collector, which we're going to look at in a moment. But look at the size of that. You'll see their dust collector in a second. So this is the dust collector that we want to talk about. So what have you got here, Cam? Yeah, so the um, chips come from uh, the well that's in the floor um, out in the shop, and they come up this 8-inch uh, diameter tube. Wow. And, and this old... Uh, when we got used, it's a great one, the dust cop, it's called. Um, the air that returns off of it uh, comes through um, some machine metal work at the top here yeah. and old, actually, rubber fittings off a Kenworth highway truck. That, <laughs> that's where we got the elbows and things. Yeah. And down into um, okay. the uh, Oneida filter here, which is a pleated filter. We talk about being able to make our own shop tools. Karen made this belt sander. Karen, can you tell us a little bit about this, where you got the plans? And... Well, the shop we had previous to this was a bit smaller, and I found some plans from Woodsmith for a full-size edge belt sander, but I realized I couldn't fit it in the shop. I didn't have enough room. So I down scaled the plans down, built it exactly as the plan called for, but a little smaller. This fits an 80-inch belt, which is more than enough room for anything we sand in here, and this is a fabulous Now, 
in my travels around here today, uh, I noticed this. Cam, can you tell us about this cabinet that you've made? Uh, sure. It um, I made it in 2004 for an exhibition, and uh, it was made to replicate an existing cabinet that was from the 1680s, a Dutch marquetry piece. It had a brass inlay around the top, and it had a lot of a really nice floral marquetry on it, which I just duplicated using pencil crayon. But the whole idea with it is I sort of emulated a maker named John Cedarquist, and he does this whole line of furniture in very distorted perspective. So it's all big flat panel, and I, I, these what look like the four drawers are actually two covered doors that open up to store <laughs> uh, printer paper and things like that. And then we've got some old uh, software CDs, I think, or extension cords and things in wow. this other side. That here. is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to also have it have four drawers because it was titled the four drawer cabinet. So where you are, Colin, there's one that pulls out that end. Yeah. And Let's have a look at yours over here. Sure. We'll do a tight shot of this. Look at this. So show us these four drawers, Cam. Okay, so number one is on the other end. And when you pull this out, there's drawer number two here. And then you pull this one out of the side. There's drawer number three, little pencil ledger yeah, there. Yeah. And there's tiny little drawer number four there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's brilliant. So it's a four drawer chest. It is. Three and drawers here and one drawer on the, the other, other side. Yeah. And lots of practice doing tiny little dovetail. Now on a tour of the house, um, Cam showed me this clock that he's built and I just, it's, it's actually breathtaking. So can you tell us a little bit about this clock? Uh, sure, Colin. Yeah, I built it in 2007. The bulk of it is in fur, edge grain fur, very tight grain. And all of the plugs, which I kind of really went to the green and green style uh, peg joinery. So all the little pegs and splines and so on are done at Pacific U. It's lined with western red cedar. Just open up the door and you can see. And uh, the face is made of uh, aspen. But all of the numbers, I bought some sheet copper and yeah. I cut them out myself wow. using one of Karen's scroll saws with a little metal cutting oh. blade. Yeah, it's an eight day clock. So yeah. once a week, I, I do it on Sundays, but yeah. you just uh, take the uh, winder from its storage part and put it in the and then turn that oh, I see. and it brings the weights up. Yeah, thanks Cam. You're welcome. This is a beautiful uh, bent uh, headboard that Karen's working on. Can you tell us a little bit about this Karen? This is just gorgeous. Um, this is all done with the bevel cutting marquetry technique which I taught myself. I've probably over the years made a dozen big headboards before. Mm -hmm. So this is our local big leaf maple and some figured maple on the top. I call the pattern the four seasons where it goes from spring to summer to fall to winter. The winter end has some mother of pearl inlaid it and the whole design probably has 18 to 20 different types of wood to bring the picture to life. I wanted to show you some of the other things that Karen's doing. Some of these uh, gorgeous jewelry boxes, different serving trays. Can you tell us, we'll, t we'll do some details in a minute of this Karen, but can you just give us an overview of what you've, what you've built here? Well, these all started as a significant gift for nieces that were turning 16 and then they kind of snowballed and I've sold some of them and everything. So the top is a, f because this is a solid panel, it needs to move a bit. So there's a bit of extra room inside the joint. Yep. It's pinned in the middles here and here. So if the panel needs to move, it can move equally from side to side. Okay. Um, the top is a mitered top and it is in reinforced on the corners with a spline miter. Wow which is the same wood as the oh. top here. And then the legs are turned. Um, I turn them on the lathe. They're uh, what we call a house leg in that the box actually sits within a corner of the leg. And what I do in the blank is uh, cut a corner out on the table saw and then carefully glue a piece back in that matches really well. And then uh, it gets turned okay. and uh, then the whole box glues right in to the corner of the leg Whoa. like that. Um, I use a really nice little brass locks and really nice quality um, hinges, good uh, quality stop brass hinges. And then the tray itself, is, this one oh. happens to be walnut. So we have box joints here, and here we have a through, wenon, uh, through tenon yep. that is wedged. Wow. And, and you line the inside with? It's a velvet type material. Um, the ladies like the colors. Yeah. They like they like to see a finish inside it, yeah. and then I dress up the inside edges just to make it look nice. This is the uh, Gary Oak 
which is in the white oak family that's here on Vancouver Island. And these are all off cuts from uh, some doors we made for the house, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, nothing ever gets thrown away. It's yeah. all recycled. <laughs> and uh, again, it's got uh, the yellow cedar floating panel on the top. Yeah. And it has a yellow cedar pull-out tray with all of the box joints and everything. Wow. And this one has a abalone insert in the middle of the um, finger lift. Hmm. And it has, again, the high-quality uh, Brousseau hinges that have the really nice 90-degree stop so the lid doesn't fall back oh. and you don't need to worry about having a chain to yeah, stop the yeah. lid, which oh, yeah. as soon as you close the lid, the chain hangs out and it chews the box uh, up. And that's a lovely detail. Yeah, so it just tidies it up. I like this part. I don't know if everybody noticed that, but when you put this in... Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is a lovely fit. That's gorgeous. Well, this has been a fascinating, not only a shop tour, but some of the work that you're doing on. And you know, I'm looking forward to coming back. I know you've got some um, car dashboards that you're working on. I know you've got some other furniture mm -hmm. projects you're working on. So I'm really looking forward to coming back and, and doing some highlights of some of the, the things you're doing. Absolutely. So thanks very much very for welcome, having me. Thanks, Colin. Looking yeah. forward to coming back another that time. That was fun. Yeah, okay, for sure.